Hello Vinyl Community, this is Randy. I received some VCLT over the weekend, so I'm going to show that to you today. I did a video a couple weeks ago about the Moody Blues. I showed my entire Moody Blues collection. I uh, was missing one of the most important records in their catalog, though, Days of Future Past. Happy Hippie the Vinyl Guy saw my video. He had an extra copy. He offered to send it to me. So I said, yes, please send that to me. He did. I received it uh, on Saturday, and I've been listening to it. It sounds great. So uh, thanks very much, Rod. I really appreciate that. It's a fantastic album. Their second album, but the first one with uh, Justin Hayward and uh, John Lodge. This is also uh, produced by Tony Clark. This features the London Festival Orchestra, which uh, really just plays during the interludes, like the introduction and some interludes between the songs. And then when the band is playing, it, it really is just them playing by themselves. So uh, uh, a lot of the uh, part that might sound like an orchestra possibly is the Mellotron being played by Mike Pender. So really good album. Uh, it really, uh, side, side one is good, but it, it really takes off with, to me, anyway, it strikes off with side two uh, when they have a Tuesday afternoon and then the evening and then nights in white satin. So, uh, fantastic album. Really been enjoying that one. So, thanks for that, Rod. Uh, here's what that record looks like it's on DRAM. Uh, Rod included a note for me. Thanks for that, Rod. And a cool uh, bumper sticker from Lost and Found Records there in Knoxville. So, thanks very much for that. I always like to get this, you know, souvenirs and things like that from uh, record stores. So, uh, I appreciate that. Rod also included another Moody Blues record. This is one from 1988 called Sur la Mer. It's a little bit different here. Mike Pender had left by this time, and uh, the new uh, keyboard player is Patrick Morass, who had come over from Yes, the band Yes. This uh, record is no longer produced by Tony Clark, uh, which was a change for the Moody Blues. I'm not sure when that change happened, but he produced their first six or seven records. This is produced by Tony Visconti. So this record... Uh, 1988, it, it really has that 1988 sound. There's a lot of, uh, uh, you know, synthesizers and keyboards on here, I suppose, you know, being played by Patrick. Well, here's some cool pictures uh, of the bands. It shows them, like, when they were kids. I assume those are pictures of the band. Lyrics on the other side and more kid pictures of the band. Um, yeah, a lot of production on this record. Uh, so this is one of those that, you know, a lot of bands in the 80s, I think, started using more synthesizers and things like that. So, uh, I'm going to have to listen to this one a few more times. But, uh, of course, it does have uh, Justin Hayward singing uh, all the songs. So, uh, yeah, I can listen to Justin Hayward sing uh, all the time. So, uh, so uh, thanks very much for that, Rod. I appreciate that. I got another record. Uh, last week that was a recommendation from uh, someone here in the uh, vinyl community. Speaker's Corner did a video a couple weeks ago where he showed uh, five, I think it was five records that were uh, he got during 2019 that were highly recommended to him by other members of the vinyl community. Uh, I can't remember who recommended this record to him, but, but he highly recommended this one, so I got it based on his recommendation. Power of Zeus is the name of the band. The Gospel According to Zeus is the name of the record. This is a record from 1970. Uh, it's on Motown Records. So this band is from Detroit. Uh, but this is a hard and heavy band. This is a, uh, I would compare this band to uh, Cactus or Blood Rock. Uh, some of these songs, uh, uh, yeah, really heavy songs. Uh, the Death Trip, the last song on side one, is a pretty heavy song. It, it is not related to uh, Death Trip by the other Detroit band, the Stooges. It's a completely different song. Uh, side two uh, ends up with, well, Go Home is uh, the first song on it. Uh, sorry, it's, uh, No Time is the first song on it. But after that, it's uh, Uncertain Destination, Realization, 
hardworking man and the Sorcerer of Isis, especially the Sorcerer of Isis and Realization. Those songs are fantastic. Uh, yeah, heavy rock songs. So, uh, yeah, organ, uh, bass, guitar, and drums. It's a four-man band. So, uh, yeah, uses that organ sound. Yeah, kind of like Vanilla Fudge, I guess, will be another good comparison band uh, for this one. So, uh, yeah, this was uh, 2018 reissue from Vinyl Me, Please. So, I'm just really happy to get that great artwork on the back. Sounds really good. Thanks very much for that recommendation, Jeff. I appreciate that. Uh, this came on this translucent violet vinyl. Rare Earth Records, which is a branch of Motown Records, I suppose, so up there in Detroit. I, uh, I received another Vinyl Me Please record this month. The, uh, I didn't get the selection of the month. I, I can't remember what that was, but it didn't look like something that I would want to listen to, so I went back to their catalog and found this one that they had released a couple of years ago. The Light Men Plus One. Energy Control Center is the name of the record. Uh, the name of the band, I guess they, they're from Houston. This is a record from 1972. This band is a, uh, a jazz band from Houston. They, uh, I guess they were called the Light Men, and then they got a, a female uh, uh, piano keyboard player, and uh, she didn't want to be called the Light Men, so they called it the Light Men Plus One. Uh, I think it's listed as like, uh, well, it's like moder uh, almost like jazz fusion or something like that. Uh, it really, it, it sounds just excellent. It's got some uh, flute on it, uh, a lot of percussion. This is actually a two-record set. This has some uh, bonus tracks. So, uh, that's a gatefold sleeve. So it reminds me of Spinal Tap, Black. Uh, this is the main guy. His name is uh, Bubba, uh, Bubba Thomas. He's the drummer. So, he, he formed the band and... Uh, did a lot of the promotion, and I think did he, I think he produced this album too. Um, here is a poem that's written by this guy Thomas Mellencon, who uh, evidently did the artwork for it. He wrote some poetry, and then he would open the shows for him, uh, singing some songs just accompanied by acoustic guitar. And there uh, actually side D has four songs that are just by him, so uh, those all sound good. But most of the record is a, a jazz. Uh, record and uh, yeah, it just sounds to me like 70s jazz, very pleasant to listen to. Uh, yeah, yeah, very good. Uh, and this came with uh, this vitamin, me, please. And uh, this book, you know, which tells about the band. So, uh, yeah, Lightning Plus One. This one comes on just standard black vinyl. The label looks like. Yeah, this was on Now Again Records. Yeah, uh, I guess before Vinyl, Vinyl Me Please, uh, did it Now Again Records was the record company. I got another jazz record. This is uh, The Comet Is Coming. Uh, the name of this record is Death to the Planet. So this is a 2017 record by The Comet Is Coming, a British. Uh, you know, jazz fusion, psychedelic rock band, um, keyboard, saxophone, and drums. This record is completely instrumental. So I got a couple other records by the Commodus coming, and my only issues with those were they had some vocals on them that I didn't like a whole lot. Uh, but this is completely instrumental, so this is much better for me. Uh, otherwise, it sounds pretty much like those other two that driving sense of urgency in their music. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, psychedelic sounding. Uh, so, yeah, the comet is coming. Uh, this is on, uh, what is this record label is called, uh, oh, I'm not even sure what the record label is called, but, uh, here's, here's what it looks like. Just four songs on here. This is one of those where they don't tell you, there's no writing at all on the cover, and they don't tell you which is side one and which is side two. So uh, I guess that means it doesn't really matter which side to start with, which uh, actually I agree with that. It doesn't really matter too much. Uh, <laughs> that's a good one. I, uh, 
I got the Sarah Vaughn record. I was there at Grimey's. I was just uh, you know looking through their jazz section. And I saw this one. I thought, wow, it'd be really good. I, I like Sarah Vaughn. Uh, I don't really have any of her music. I have a. Uh, an old cassette I got a long time ago with uh, the leading ladies of jazz, which had some Sarah Vaughan songs on it, along with some Dinah Washington, Ella Fitzgerald, Billie Holiday. Uh, so Sarah Vaughan, a singer from the, I believe from the 40s and 50s, uh, American singer, jazz singer. So yeah, this is a, a compilation of her golden hits. I really love this album cover. I mean, this is really what made me want to get this record. I, I think it's just a fantastic album cover. Uh, so this is her greatest hits. Uh, these are basically like jazz standards or, you know, American songbook type songs. So you really can't go wrong with any of these. I'm not sure, but I think Misty, was Misty her hit song? It's the first one on here, and I think it may have been a hit song uh, for her in particular. I think she's associated with that song. You know, I know it's written by uh, Errol Garner. Uh, but... Uh, also on here, though, is uh, Autumn in New York and Moonlight in Vermont. I love those two songs. It seems like they're frequently, uh, I find them to, on a lot of albums together and right next to each other. And to me, they sound kind of alike. Two great songs, though. Uh, the other one here that really stands out is Lullaby of Birdland, which another, is another one I think that is associated possibly with Sarah Vaughan. So, uh, yeah, Greatest Hits album from 1961. This is a 19, uh, uh, 2019 reissue, so this is a new record. It just sounds fantastic. I mean, really, it just sounds absolutely perfect. So, really glad to get that one. This is, uh, yeah, it's on these uh, uh, replica labels. Uh, Mercury. Really good. Sarah Vaughn. And then the last record that I have to show you today is the one that we are listening to right now. This is Dick Shorey at Carnegie Hall. Dick Shorey was a uh, percussionist, I guess, in the 50s and 60s. Uh, percussionist and uh, arranger. He wrote, uh, he, well, I guess he wrote music, but he arranged these songs with a lot of percussion. So, uh, and then it tells me in here... Uh, that the, uh, so this was recorded at Carnegie Hall there in New York, and this tells me that the Carnegie Hall performance marked the close of the 10th consecutive season that Shorey toured with his Percussion Pops Orchestra, and once again proved that the now switched on Shorey sound is one of the most popular concert attractions around. So, yeah, this is a live album recorded there at Carnegie Hall. It has lots of information here about the recording process. This also has some uh, special guests on it. So this has uh, Gary Burton uh, playing uh, vibraphone on one of the songs, which is uh, Sunset Bell. And then also, uh, uh, yeah, Joe Morello, the drummer for uh, Dave Brubeck, uh, plays on this. So, uh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we're having Midnight Cowboy right now. So this is um, uh, arrangements of these songs down there at uh, Carnegie Hall, and uh, yeah, it sounds really excellent. I mean, I guess it's basically easy listening. You know, it was sort of a, uh, a focus on, uh, well, this is sort of like an audiophile record. I think you would say, uh, it, it, like I say, it goes into a lot of explanation here about the recording process, and uh, it says here, there was no pre-mixing as the signals were direct fed from microphones to recorder. So, uh, yeah, I guess this would have been an audiophile record. This is a quadraphonic record. So stereo or quadraphonic. So, I don't have a quadraphonic system, but, uh, yeah, luckily there's that stereo slash quadraphonic. So, sounds fantastic. This is really a, a very enjoyable record. I, I like these kind of um, easy listening uh, records. So. So there you go, those are the records I have to show you today. Uh, uh, I'm interested to know what you think about any of those. And uh, thanks for the uh, recommendation from Jeff at uh, Speaker's Corner. And uh, thanks very much to uh, Rod, Happy Hippie the Vinyl Guy, for the two Moody Blues records. I'll be listening to those a lot more uh, in the next few days. So um, that's it. Let me know what you think about these records. And thanks very much for watching.